Have you ever wondered why the Pacific Ring of Fire experiences such a high frequency of earthquakes and just how severe these quakes can get? This region, aptly named for its fiery temperament, is a hotbed of geological activity, spanning 40,000 kilometers and home to 75% of the world's active volcanoes. The Pacific Ring of Fire is notorious for its seismic shenanigans. This horseshoe-shaped belt, encircling the Pacific Ocean, is not just a geographical marvel, but a geological enigma. The frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions that shake up this region are not random, but the result of a fascinating interplay of tectonic plates beneath the Earth's crust. The sheer magnitude and frequency of these tremors are enough to pique the curiosity of any geology enthusiast or casual observer. So, what makes the Pacific Ring of Fire such a seismic hotspot? And just how powerful can these quakes get? Join us as we delve into the geological mysteries of the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire, a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean, is a direct result of plate tectonics and the movement and collisions of lithospheric plates. Now, if you're wondering what plate tectonics is, it's essentially the theory that explains how the Earth's outer shell is divided into several plates that glide over the mantle, which is the rocky inner layer above the core. These plates move, collide, and slide past each other, leading to some fascinating and often destructive natural phenomena. The Pacific Ring of Fire, which spans 40,000 kilometers, is a prime example of this. This massive ring, shaped more like a horseshoe, is home to 75% of the world's active volcanoes. So, if you've ever wondered where most of our planet's volcanic activity occurs, there's your answer. But it's not just about volcanoes. The Pacific Ring of Fire is also where 90% of the world's earthquakes take place. That's right, almost all of the Earth's seismic activity is concentrated in this ring. Why, you ask? Well, it's all down to those tectonic plates we mentioned earlier. You see, the Ring of Fire is the result of tectonic plate boundaries, particularly subduction zones. Subduction zones are areas where one tectonic plate is forced under another, sinking into the mantle. This process generates intense heat and pressure, leading to volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Imagine trying to push two massive, solid objects against each other. The pressure builds until finally, something has to give. That's exactly what's happening beneath the surface of the Earth in the Ring of Fire. So, when you hear about an earthquake or a volcanic eruption occurring somewhere along the Ring of Fire, it's a direct result of these plates moving and colliding. It's a constant reminder of the dynamic, ever-changing nature of our planet. In essence, the Pacific Ring of Fire is a hotbed of geological activity, thanks to the dynamic nature of our planet's crust. But how exactly do these tectonic movements lead to earthquakes? Let's dive down, way down into the Earth's crust, where the story begins. Picture this. The Earth's crust is not one solid piece, but a jigsaw puzzle of large plates. These titanic tectonic plates are always in motion, albeit at a snail's pace, typically moving just a few centimeters per year. Now, imagine two of these massive plates meeting at a fault line. They're not always the best of neighbors. Sometimes they stubbornly refuse to slide past each other smoothly. Instead, they stick, and stress starts to build up along the fault line. It's like a colossal game of tug of war, with neither side willing to let go. This stress isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's energy, and it's got to go somewhere. As the pressure continues to mount, the rocks near the fault line undergo deformation. They twist, they bend, they warp, all in an attempt to accommodate the increasing stress. But rocks, like us, have their breaking point. When the stress becomes too much, the rocks rupture, and the pent-up energy is released in the form of seismic waves. These waves then radiate out from the epicenter, shaking the ground as they pass. This is what we feel as an earthquake. The type of plate boundary plays a significant role in the earthquake's characteristics. There are three main types, divergent, where plates move apart, convergent, where they come together, and transform, where they slide past each other. Each type can generate earthquakes, but the most powerful ones typically occur at convergent boundaries where one plate is forced beneath another in a process called subduction. In the Pacific Ring of Fire, most of the boundaries are convergent, leading to some of the world's most powerful and frequent earthquakes. These complex processes beneath the Earth's surface are what make the Pacific Ring of Fire a seismic powerhouse. 
So, we now understand why earthquakes occur, but what determines their frequency and severity? Well, let's delve into it from a geological perspective. The frequency and severity of earthquakes are influenced by a multitude of factors. The rate of tectonic movement is one of them. When tectonic plates move faster, they tend to cause more frequent and stronger earthquakes. Then, there are geological structures. The way rocks and soil are arranged in a particular area can amplify or dampen the seismic waves, affecting the intensity of an earthquake. For instance, soft, unconsolidated soil can increase the shaking, making the earthquake feel more severe. Another key factor is the type of plate boundary involved. Subduction zones, where one plate is forced under another, are notorious for producing the most powerful earthquakes. In the Pacific Ring of Fire, these factors combine to create a region of intense and frequent seismic activity. This makes it one of the most seismically active regions on our planet. Let's recap what we've learned about the Pacific Ring of Fire and its seismic activity. This fiery ring is a result of plate tectonics, where the jostling of the Pacific plate with surrounding plates creates a hotbed of seismic and volcanic activity. This constant dance of the Earth's crustal plates is the main culprit behind the creation of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Shifting gears to the mechanism of earthquakes, we've discovered that the stress accumulation and subsequent release at fault lines gives birth to these natural phenomena. It's like the Earth taking a deep breath and then exhaling with each breath, creating tremors that we feel as earthquakes. And lastly, we dove into the factors that influence the frequency and severity of these quakes. Variables such as the depth of the earthquake, the type of rock involved, and the speed at which the plates move all play a role in determining the power of these geological events. As we can see, the Pacific Ring of Fire is a fascinating case study in the power and dynamism of Earth's geological processes.